Hello, and welcome to my weekly book review, and today I want to talk to you about The Amityville Horror by Jay Anson. Uh, I have never read this novel before. I'm familiar with the story, and I imagine you are too. It's the story of 112 Ocean Avenue out in Amityville, Long Island, uh, where uh, Ronald DeFeo uh, shot and killed his family. And then George and Kathleen Lutz moved into the house with their family and experienced all of the haunted house tropes. <laughs> uh, I read this in preparation for the Suntup edition, uh, which is now available to order if you're a fan of the novel. Um, well, let's talk about the novel itself. Uh, I know in the years, you know, the 45 years since this novel's been released, uh, a lot of the uh, factual nature of it, the, uh, the real true story has been uh, heavily, heavily criticized. And I'm pretty sure it's been kind of proven to be fiction. I think Ronald DeFeo's lawyer even talked about how this whole idea of the haunted house was uh, kind of fabricated over a dinner and over some glasses of wine. Nonetheless, the novel is still, of course, uh, marketed as nonfiction. And, uh, well, it reads like nonfiction. It reads like true crime, which I don't know that Jay Anson ever wrote any other novels, and I'm not going to lie. Uh, based on the writing of this one, I, I'm not too heartbroken if he didn't write too many other novels. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a read. I mean, I'm familiar with the story. I've never read I had never read the novel prior uh, to this past week, and well, after having read the novel, I did not. I decided to not actually order a copy of the Suntup edition, probably because I never need to read this novel again. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, maybe it's different for you. Maybe you can read it and you'll absolutely love it. Uh, I mean, this is a story that is uh, very, very criticized over the past few years, and I can kind of see why that criticism is there, uh, just in terms of the writing style in general. I mean, it's it's written like a true crime, but it uh, is also said to be very exclamatory. Lots of exclamatory uh, statements here, there, and everywhere. Hanging from one hinge, one, one such exclamation. Um I'm sure this has been pointed out online, but one thing I did notice is that, I mean, in the 45 years, I know I know people don't like it when authors' works are touched. I mean, Jay Anson passed away in 1980, um, but in all of the years prior, they still haven't fixed this, where the prologue says, hey, they moved in on December 23rd, and then you go to chapter one. They moved in on December 18th. Like, what the, what the hell? <laughs> Anyways, um... Yeah, George and Kathy Lutz are down on their luck, and they get the deal of a lifetime uh, to move into 112 Ocean Ave, which was the house from the DeFeo murders, which happened back in 1975, 74? When did he murder his family? 74? That was a real-life murder. That was, you know, yeah, 74. Uh, 74, and the 75 is when the novel takes place, December of 75. And, you know, this, the haunting here at Amityville, it, it, I guess it's, you know, inspiring for the horror genre uh, because when it comes to haunted houses, the haunted house on 112 hits all, hits all the stops. I mean, you got your uh, little ghostly apparitions touching you, haunting you. You got demonic pigs. You got uh, faces appearing in the fireplace. You have hoof prints out in the snow. You have a red room door to hell in your basement. You have people levitating in their beds. You have people showing up uh, as, like, old, old wrinkles on their faces. You have the priest getting, like, the stigmata blisters in his hands. You get everything except you know, any consistency. You don't get consistency. You get a little bit of everything. And the little bit of everything is just so far-fetched that it, it took me out of it. And I know it's supposed to be a true crime story, and obviously you want to have true reactions from George and Kathy, the Lutz, but uh, their reactions to this, I think, are stupid. They do everything except leave the house. And they're like, well, all our money's in this house. And I'm like, well, if you're you know, you're being terrorized by these ghosts. You don't have to abandon your shit. Just, you know, move out. Go to go visit your parents for a while, which they do eventually do, but George sticks around like an idiot. He tries talking to Father Mancuso about it, and the, the phone is constantly getting uh, staticky, and he tries everything in his power except, you know, leaving the house and calling him from another phone or meeting him in person, going to a payphone. It's just, I don't know. 
Father Mancuso goes to bless the house in the very early chapters, and a voice yells at him to get out, and then he's got these blistering stigmatas in his hands, and then he spends the entirety of the novel basically just avoiding the house and avoiding the Lutzes, and every time he thinks about them or talks to them, he gets violently ill, and it doesn't go anywhere. It's just, I don't, I mean, I guess you can't really get it go anywhere if you're supposed to be nonfiction, but it's just, I don't know. I thought it was rather annoying. Uh, they do, in this novel itself, it does have, you know, floor plans here, uh, which Maxime Place is doing his own floor plans for the Suntup edition. Curiously enough, he is not signing the Suntup edition. Uh, he did the maps for uh, Blackwater, and uh, he signed to the number edition for Blackwater, so I'm surprised he's not signing the Amityville Horror, but whatever. Um uh, yeah, I thought the novel just, it didn't really go anywhere, which I suppose is kind of the point if it's nonfiction. But, I mean, in the years since, every other single homeowner has said that there's nothing going on in this house. Uh, future homeowners have even gone so as far as to change the uh, the facade, the over the look of the house that, you know, people stop stopping by and staring at their house. It's blurred out on Google Maps because they don't feel bothering them. Uh, they've confirmed that the red room in the basement is just a closet and not, in fact, a portal to hell like the Lutzes, uh, you know, make it out to be in this. So it's, uh, it's a wild read. It's, it's very exclamatory in its style. Uh, it's very in-your-face, but it doesn't really uh, commit to one single haunting trope. It decides to cover the whole bingo board and cover all of the tropes. That being said, I am very interested in the introduction and afterward of the Suntup edition. Uh, Paul Suntup is doubling down on the nonfiction aspect, so the introduction is by Lauren DeDio, De who was the first rep local reporter on the scene at 112 um, after uh, the Lutzes abandoned the property. After 28 days, after moving in on either the 18th or the 23rd, TBD. Uh, and then it's got a afterward by Eric Walter, who is the director of My Amityville Horror. It was a documentary that followed uh, Daniel Lutz, the son. I've heard very mixed things about that. I haven't checked it out. But it does uh, include many illustrations from Brad Gray. And the illustrations look superb. So if there was going to be an edition for it, I mean, you can probably get the artist edition for, well, I don't want to say relatively cheap, because it's a very high quality artist edition, so it's going to cost you a couple bucks there. But you get the nice uh, Brad Gray dust jacket, which looks really nice. Numbered edition is still available. There's about 90 copies left. Uh, letter edition, which looks absolutely stunning, is completely sold out. Uh, if you could afford it, I would say go with the letter edition. But anyways... You know, it's, uh, it is technically Suntup's first non-fiction title, um, because it is classified as non-fiction, even though, like I said, it has been spoken about, um, just ad nauseum since it was released about how it's not actually a true story. Uh, but yeah, I've read the novel. I can't say that I recommend it. I mean, if you want to read, you know, a haunted house novel that has all of the tropes but none of the depth, then the Amityville Horror is for you. <laughs> and if you want a fine press edition of it, check out Suntup Editions. Link in the description below to uh, Suntup's edition, which, like I said, it looks stunning. Maybe I might snag a copy for cheap if it, I can find a dinged copy on the secondary market, because I would like to read that introduction and afterward, even though... I don't believe this is a true story, and both the introduction and afterward are going in the vein of it being a true story. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. I'm doing a book review every single week, although this week I'm doing two because it's now Monday. Uh, so happy Memorial Day if uh, you know, you're watching this the day it's uploaded. Uh, thank you for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing, and we'll see you around next time.